What is up guys? Welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Thank you for joining me today as we are going to just mess with the Aztec for a little bit. So in the last vlog, we finally got the Aztec to start. First time this car has has ran since February of you know this past year it ran it ran pretty decent it was a little shaky which I expected it to be shaky because uh, of the bad gas that's been sitting in there um, sorry about the wind last couple of days cold windy we had snow yesterday it was like 25 degrees and the wind chill was awful but um yeah, today the sun's out, still cold, still breezy, but this is really a good time to look into this a little further. So after I filmed the the vlog, the day you know the day that we got it started for the first time, the next day I came out here and I tried to start it again, let it run for a little bit, and it didn't go so well this time. Now, when we got it started the first time, I noticed we still have a few issues that popped up, and I'm still honestly not 100% sure why these issues are here. Uh, the very first issue that we came across was the fact that all of the transmission fluid leaked out again from the top cooler line on the radiator. So uh, the day after we got started, I came out here, I took the line off, thought maybe it wasn't you know sitting in there right tried to to get it in there and it clipped back on so the radiator the the fitting in the radiator is holding the line on so I really don't know why all the fluid leaked out unless there's something wrong with the fitting but when I got started again more fluid came out it was slower this time so I wonder if the line might be bent uh, and it's not going into the fitting perfectly straight that's what I'm thinking of so I might I might have to take the line off again and maybe try to bend it and see if we can get it straight because I was having a hard time getting it on originally when I first was attempting to do the lines so maybe that's a possibility maybe it got bent and uh, I'll have to bend it back so that could be an easy fix I don't know and if, if it's not that then we'll, we may have to replace the fitting there might be damage to the uh, fitting for some reason the next thing that occurred was uh, we saw some smoke coming from the right side of the uh, you know right over top around the transmission area and I don't think that's any concern um, that was a brand new crossover pipe and uh, I'm sure there was leftover like machine oils and stuff from when that was being made uh, so I think that was just a little bit of leftover oil residue burning off of that piece. Um, so I don't think that's anything to be concerned about. Uh, actually, the other day, it didn't even smoke barely. It barely smoked at all on that. So it probably had all burned off uh, during the first few runs that we did the other night. And the third thing that occurred was uh, a coolant leak from one of those lines going into the heater core. This could be an easy fix, maybe. I just, I'm not looking forward to the possibility of me having to tear some of the stuff off of the, on that side of the engine again. Uh, vacuum lines, wiring harnesses, no big deal. The air snorkel is a pain to get on. It's easy to take off, but it's a pain to get on. So I, I don't want to deal with the air snorkel. And, um, that may still not even cut it to, to there being enough room for me to actually get that that hose. Uh, that, that tire thing is kind of almost buried. We'll look at that here in a sec. And the fourth thing that has occurred, and I'm really confused about this, and I'm really concerned about it too. Hopefully it's not that big a deal. 
there was a screaming noise. Uh, something under the hood started screaming after the second time that we started the engine. Originally, I thought it was the power steering lines, the new power steering lines, rubbing up against uh, one of the uh, the belt tensioner, the belt tensioner pulley. Uh, so the other day, I took that hose off, and I'm probably going to regret that. But this is the hose. Um, I took it off from from the rubber rubber hose that's on or behind the reservoir on, on the pump. So this is the part that slides into that hose. That's gonna be fun getting back on, especially now that the pump's in place. And you can see some of it's kind of marked up because I was trying to, to pry them back, but there are marks on the sides of this, right at this, around this bend here, where the pulley was rubbing up against it. So that bend, because it sits in here like this, and you can see this bend somehow flares out too far. So now that this is out, we could probably try to flatten it out a little bit, maybe see if it works a little bit better. Um, but I mean, from me and my friend trying to push this back and stuff, we kind of mangled the original shape of it. So we'll just have to work with it from there and get the actual bottom part of this hooked up. So anyway, it's off and it was still screaming. So it was not necessarily the line making the noise. I read a few things online that night. Um, about the scream and it could be a couple things uh, obviously it could be the fact that the belt is is worn it is a worn belt I didn't buy the belt yet um, like I had originally wanted to um, but I do have the intention on replacing the belt so it could be that it could easily also be the belt tensioner is going bad it could be that the idler pulley itself is going bad you know all this stuff sat for for about eight months um, so I don't know did notice however that when you when you slightly rev the engine as the engines gaining revs it, it kind of stops and then once the engine starting to you know come back down in speed it you know it still does it um, so I don't know another thing that kind of got me worried was the fact that somebody and a couple of threads that I read online said that it could easily be maybe the exhaust manifolds leaking air, uh, bad manifolds and stuff. These are brand new exhaust manifolds and I really, really hope that that's not the case. I will be extremely disappointed. We got new manifolds on there, new manifold gaskets, cleaned up all of the surfaces before we put them on. I don't understand it. So that's another mystery that we're gonna have to solve. I'm out here because I, I don't think I got to this point in my story yet, I'm sorry. The other night when I came out here to, to, to start it, it ran pretty bad. Like the, the night that we got it started for the very first time, it actually ran really good. The other day, it ran really bad. It was barely wanting to start at all. It stalled out once once it was running for a few minutes, just completely kaput, and uh, I don't know, so it started getting, you know, I, I haven't let this thing get to operating temperature yet, um, because I know, you know, we put fresh antifreeze in it, obviously, but uh, I wanted to actually bleed the, the system more, because I'm sure now that we got it started, um, you know, the antifreeze in the radiator probably sank now that it circulated into the engine block and a couple of other places. Uh, I wasn't getting any heat to begin with. No heat was actually entering the cabin. Now, you know, I know I, I didn't let it run to full temperature, obviously, but even it, when it starts to get warm, if we were getting good circulation into the heater core, we would start to have heat, and I wasn't getting any heat at all. It was still blowing freezing cold air out of the vents. So I really hope the heater core isn't bad, but I'm hoping maybe we just have some air left over in the system. So that is where the antifreeze leak is. You can see it better today. Um, now, this might not be, this might not be an awful fix. It looks like 
it's actually coming from around that where the hose meets the plastic piece. I'm I was thinking and I didn't really notice this until I was looking stuff up online. The plastic piece here is more of like a quick connect for the metal line which is one of the bypass hoses. The particular bypass hose that that connects to goes into the thermostat housing. So as you can see, you can't see it, which is why if I wanted to try to fix that hose and stuff, it's you don't really have a good uh, grip to get it to. It won't budge though because the hose or the metal line is, well, it's a metal line, so it's, it's tied down to um, a, a brace. But as you can see, it's there. So this quick connect comes out of this rubber hose. And I didn't realize that. So I think maybe what happened is when I was trying to pull the original metal line off, you can kind of see, it may just be coming out of the line. So if I can get a good grip, this hose may just have to be pushed back down further onto that collar. And that could hopefully, hopefully, eliminate the problem. It's really hard to get a grip on that, so I I don't know. I'll, have to, I'll figure something out with that. Hopefully. I mean, the EGR is in the way. You know, if the EGR was off, and I really don't want to deal with messing with that again, probably get a better grip on it, but I don't know. I'll, I'll have to see what we can do about that. Now, the other night when I was running it, and it was running really bad, I found another cause for concern. You can kind of see it was a little bit worse the other day, but there was a little bit of foam, little little bit of foam. The other night when I was running it, there was a lot more of it, so it went away. Now this could be for a few reasons. Ooh, look at that spider. Weird spider. Wow. Interesting. So th that could have been for a few reasons. Uh, the first reason could be because there's leftover coolant in the engine, you know, in the, well, we got all the old, old oil out, but it could be in the particles that's still in the engine, of course. Um, and, you know, all that stuff was circulated. So it could be because of that. Um, it could also be because I put the sea foam in there and the sea foam could have just been moisture-y. Obviously, the engine hasn't really been running long enough to burn any moisture off, so that could be could be another reason why some of that ended up on there. As you can see, just from the times that we've been running it, it's no longer clean in there, so the sea foam looks like it is doing its job. So the oil, I mean, the, the springs and stuff still look great, but you can see the oil and stuff in there is already turning color and uh, that just shows me that the sea foam for the time that the car has been running the sea foam has been starting to clean up some stuff now the oil overall let's take a look at it yeah doesn't look too bad now it's kind of hard to tell on the light I can't tell if that's just like a greenish tint on the end of this or if it's, you know, um, just the clean oil mixing in with whatever contaminants are in there. I mean, the oil doesn't look like coffee, it's about the drip, so yeah, it still has somewhat of a golden color to it, so that's, that's good. Um, so the oil is still definitely looking fresh, definitely good, hasn't turned to muck yet. and. Uh, but all the stuff at the top is probably from, uh, obviously, the, the valleys from the camshaft and, and stuff, breaking all that, that stuff up there. I thought about maybe taking the belt off, maybe once the battery gets a little juice in it, because the battery is still dying cold, you know. I'll probably have to jump it to start it now. But I do, I don't see anything else rubbing up against any of these uh, cranks or pulleys. But something 
keeps screaming over here, and I, I just hope it's something belt related and not the possibility of there being some sort of air leak on the manifolds anywhere. Thought about the fact that it could also be this transmission line putting air out, maybe because it, even though it was leaking, it might be pushing air out. I don't know. I have no idea what it is. So, um, so yeah, we'll just try to work with it little by little. All right, well, I guess the good news is I figured out why this was leaking. I was kind of correct. The bad news is it's broken. So here's the here's the end of the hose. I kind of chewed up a little bit with the vice grips, and I'm honestly not sure if that's supposed to be bent like that. I don't know if I did that or what. Still garbage in there. But anyway, there's the piece on the top of the uh, metal line, the quick connect. You can see it's. It was kind of broke right off. So now I wonder if I'm going to be able to get that quick connect off, if I can get a grip on it. Because maybe I'm making it over top of it. It's really a pain trying to get this line off. The, I don't know. That's going to be, that's going to suck. Getting it back on shouldn't be a problem, but getting it off. And now I'm wondering if I have to replace this heater hose. And if <laughs> trying to get the heater hose is not going to be, not going to be fun. Um, yeah, it's going all, it's going right back here. I mean, maybe what I might have to do if that's the case. I can, uh probably take the map sensor off and the coils off again and leave this side of the engine alone so I could probably just take undo the spark plug wires remove the map and then remove the entire brace that the uh, the coil pack sits on <sighs> yeah yeah there's kind of a difference there so what I'm going to do, and the guy at the parts store said I can do this. I'm really, really glad. We're going to cut this hose. We're going to cut this compression braid off. Um, the rest of that is probably still sitting in there. So we're going to cut that off, and then we're just going to hose clamp it. Um, it's got a barb at the end of it. That should be enough to hold it in. And then if that doesn't seem to work... Uh, then I suppose sometime in the near future we will be replacing the hose, but hopefully we don't have to do that. Uh, but he says, he says the hose clamp thing, uh, will work just fine. So let's get to it. That didn't take long. Ugh. And yeah, it looks like the, the plastic piece ended right there. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, there was... There was a lot of gunk floating around in this system at one time. And okay. Took a little more work than I thought. So we got our new connector on there. Got the hose clamp tightened down. The barb on the new connector is right here all the way around. So the hose clamp is all the way around it. There shouldn't. <laughs> Shouldn't be any leaks. Um, what's left over here is from me pushing the connector onto the line. I think the connector's on there. It was kind of hard getting on, but we're tugging and it's not coming off. Neither one of these are coming off, so that should, well, you know, I've said this all the time, but that should be the, <laughs> that should take care of it, I hope. I had to unhook this vacuum line and now I don't remember how I had it sitting. I know it goes up around there with these. Uh, I gotta find a way to get these to lay down. Zip time to this other loom here or something. All right, so now that that's done, um, let's get ready to start it. But first, I wanna open this 
bleed valve here, and I want to see if there was any air in it. See if anything comes out, coolant, whatever. Uh, coolant, coolant came out. So is the system bled? <laughs> is there any air in it? I don't know. It's really hard to, for me to tell. I've never done this before, so this one. Oh, oh, got some air. No more air? Okay, that's good. Tighten it back up. Still get bad contact from all of these parts. Okay, let's see what happens. Oh, turn it off for now. Okay, there's the whistle. God, that noise. Something else is still burning off down there. Could be the leftover coolant. Oh, that noise is irritating. Still got you misfire, according to that. Got the heat on. Obviously nothing yet. Doesn't look like it's leaking, so that's good. Exhaust is still really funny. A lot of ooh. Oh. Wow. That's probably just from it sitting for so long. I hope. I don't know, there's still a lot of steam or smoke. I really hope that's still just from like the new exhaust. I mean, I can't see anything else leaking. There's the one other coolant bypass tube that I had to replace, but... See, it's starting to really shake now. The whining noise goes away, so that's kind of cool. Where'd that rag go? Yeah. Vacuum? Is there a vacuum leak, maybe? 
There's a vacuum leak. I bet it might be that back key PVC valve or something. I knew that wasn't sitting in there right. That could be where the smoke's coming from too. Maybe it's not sealed right. I don't know. There's so many different things. Very bizarre. Still no heat. It's it's at the sea now though. It's starting to rise. I do hear a slight hiss. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a, it seems like it's a vacuum issue now. Now that I've got it running long enough. getting heat yet? It really still doesn't feel like there's heat. These work, right? Wow. Down. Oh, did you see all that dirt? I can hear the hiss. I wonder what it's coming from. All of these were on when I, unless, like I said, unless it's that back one, I might just have to get this whole hose replaced. My poor girl. I just wonder where it's coming from. God darn it. There's only a few vacuum lines over here. There's this one obviously, and this one's working. Because when we unplug it, that, oh, the engine completely acts different. Hopefully it'll start back up. There you go. All right. You hang it in there. So the other one, there's the one at the back valve cover, which goes to this. Oh my word. There's the one that goes to the brake booster, which is here, but Oh my god, go away. It might be coming from that back one. If I could take this off, I want to hear if there's a difference in the sound. Oh, nope, that one's, okay, so that one's working. Apparently, surprisingly. Purge valve. I mean, it, 
other than that, it really doesn't sound too bad. It's not ticking. Other than that, that noise. That's still cold. And it's getting up there now. There should be heat, I'm assuming. Gas gauge must not be right unless it's really chugging down gas because of how bad it's running. And then it just picks back up. Not as much smoke, so that's good. Uh, the service engine light is not flashing anymore. It's a steady light, so I wonder what that's all about. Still no heat. It is climbing, oh, I keep doing that, I'm sorry. It is climbing upward. Should be at operating temperature. Still no heat, no fans. I don't hear any fans yet. So the thermostat's not open yet. I'm getting concerned. Oh, this isn't good. Oh yeah, it's still climbing. I don't like this. All right, we're done for now. Let's see. Well, the hose was getting warm, but I don't know if it's. Let's let's undo this bleeder valve carefully, very carefully. That's not hot. There's nothing in that hose. There's no... Okay, that's interesting. Wow, well, now it's taking it. We must have needed a lot more coolant than we thought. Oh, there's the milk. Now that I know there's a vacuum leak, it could also be because of that. Could be moisture getting in from the vacuum leak. I mean, the oil still looks good. Still no off-putting color or anything. Alright, so it's been a few minutes. I got steam coming up from over here now. So, we probably have an issue with this hose. Hose is warm. Uh, engine coolant started to come out of the bleeder here. The uh, the car is staying here at temperature now, so I guess that's good, surprisingly. So the thermostat opened. The gas gauge is doing this, so my assumption now is that the gauge is faulty. Um, still no heat in here. No heat in here yet. Nope, nope, no heat. It still runs fine, it's running fine right now. Uh, the RPMs are up on their own and it, then it drops, see? And then that's when it starts running like absolute crap. Service engine light went off, which <laughs> is really weird. Uh, but this, I don't know. There's like smoke and steam coming from everywhere. The, the steam back here, I haven't seen it in a while. It still doesn't look like my new hose is leaking. So I guess that's good. I still see some steam here, but who knows. 
Pudding's going away, so that's good. Must be burning off finally because the engine's at temperature. Cap, cap is warm, doesn't feel like it's too hot though. This could be the reason why. I wonder if we just have to re replace this hose now. Hose is hot. So I, I, I think I'm getting something through there, which is where the steam's coming from. But uh, I've still got no, oh, I still got no coolant or no heat in here. Heat is up on, on all the way, recirc. Put on the fan or from the outside. Doesn't really matter, I guess. I don't know. But she's holding temperature. That's got to be good for something. Now I just got to really figure out why it's running so bad. It's doing okay now. It's running strong on its own. And then just like that, that's when it starts to shake and no service engine light now. I don't really understand it. I've still got no heat coming through here though. So I wonder if we need more antifreeze or if it's because of whatever's going on there at the radiator. Um, what else? No smoke? Doesn't smoke now. Sounds like a trotting horse though. Uh, temp is rising now. Temp is starting to rise again. Could be maybe because of the steam there. It was holding its own for a while. You know the fans haven't kicked on yet. I haven't seen the fans come on. Which uh, is also pretty bizarre. I wonder if the hose is just bad. I really hope that's all it is. Still no heat. Still at the half mark. Up, up, and there it goes. It's starting to rise. It was staying below the half mark for a while. It climbed up to the middle mark and then the thermostat must have opened, which is roughly about the time the steam started coming out. And uh, now it's starting to climb a little. So there's a uh, there's obviously a leak over here. Ooh, yep, yep. This uh, it's getting some temp. It's getting some temp, so I guess that's good. This don't worry about that. Uh, I had that open when I first started it, and antifreeze came shooting out. So I know that should be free of air. Um, and then, like I said, uh, this opened up at some point. Man. Well, that's the longest that I've had it running. It didn't stall, but the intermittent on and off thing, as far as it running good and running bad, that's, that's interesting. Yeah, this looks like it's coming right around this hose, so I wonder... Maybe a, oh my gosh. <coughs> wow. <coughs> Trying to talk over top of that, I sucked that into my mouth. Ugh. Man, that's, that's awful. Okay. So maybe we just need a hose, a new hose, or maybe the, the clamp isn't tight. I wonder if it was like that when, when they had it. Maybe, maybe that's the deal. Alright guys, this vlog has been long enough. I'm probably just going to wrap this up now. But surprisingly enough, it's still running. Um, it hasn't overheated yet. Like, you know, it's obviously getting warm. Uh, a little bit above norm. And uh, I'm not going to chance that. But, like I said, up until this point, it was actually holding its own. It was doing really well. Yeah, okay, well, I'm glad to see that that's going away, so it must have just been a little bit of leftover moisture in there, and maybe we have nothing to worry about. <sighs> so guys, if you enjoyed this vlog, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash store slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. Also, stay tuned to the next vlog. I have some uh, important news uh, regarding Mike's Vehicle Spotlight. 
So I know some people have been wondering what the deal is with that, if it's ever going to come back. And I'm going to address the whole topic of Mike's Vehicle Spotlight in the next vlog for you guys. So if you're interested, don't miss it. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.